Welcome everybody to the first installment of our position tracking slash odometry math tutorial. I'm Nolan from FGC Team 5436. The goal of this video series will be for you to understand how to track the two coordinate position of a robot as well as its angle heading from three inputs uh, up from tracking wheels or odometers, whatever you call them. This video series will not contain any hardware instructions or software instructions to implement an odometry tracking position system on your robot, but all of the concepts that we go over today will play into any odometry system uh, that you shall ever create. Uh, this video series will have a basic and an advanced track. The basic track will have to take a few more things for granted as well as not go as in depth into the math, and it will eventually end up with a less accurate uh, a less accurate formula for calculating the position of the robot. While the advanced track will, will need a little bit more advanced math, but will end up with a more accurate formula and a greater depth, greater depth understanding of how the odometry tracking system works. So this video series will have three parts to it. Part one will go over two parallel wheel tracking, so this would be for something like a tank drive, and this is, you can see a picture of the tank drive that we used to test out our early systems. We called this one Gilgamesh. Then part two is when we implement the third wheel, where we put the middle wheel in the perfect exact center between the left and right wheel, and that will only work, part two's math will only work when it's perfectly in the center. And then part three, we'll go over some corrections and offsets that we can do when the it's impossible, when it's mechanically impossible to put the third wheel exactly between the left wheel and the right wheel. And all of these parts will build off of each other as the third wheel in this one just builds off of the two wheels tracking. Uh, the calculations will all be the same, just a little bit of vector math. And then part three will basically just try to figure out what that what the middle wheel would be doing based off of the offset of the third wheel. So let's get right into part one. Part one is about tracking tank drives through arcs. So this will not involve the third wheel at all yet. It will eventually involve the third wheel though. And it's important to be able to track robots through arcs because uh, even simple movements like having the robot move in a straight line is actually the same thing as the robot moving an arc with a radius of infinity. So we've got a radius of infinity here. And even when the robot moves in a circle, and you've got like a circle, and it's just moving around itself, you'll know that the, this is just an arc, but with radius zero. And of course, you've got your basic arc right here basic arc will be the same. There you go. A basic arc will be the same. So all of these movements are the same. So no matter what a tank drive does, it is driving through an arc. So let's come up with that calculation. Uh, some of the pace prerequisites for this, uh, for this part of the video, the basic prerequisites for this part of the video, is to be comfortable with the properties of circles. So be comfortable with the arc length calculation, which is uh, the angle times the radius. Be comfortable with the definition of tangent lines, and also be just be comfortable with gen the general idea of a circle because you're going to need to know some of the miscellaneous proofs that go along with circles. Then finally, you're going to need to know some basic right triangle trigonometry to be able to find the sides of a right triangle. If you're going to be doing some of the advanced math after the basic track, you're going to need to know the law of sines to find the hypotenuse of the and the chord length that a curve tends. And then you're going to need to know some of the trigonomic identities, which is the sine of 90 minus x equals cosine of x. Okay, so let's begin by restating what we know about the problem. We know that the left wheel moves a certain distance every frame that we get the new encoder count. 
So if we take this value, we know that the left wheel moves a certain distance, and we know that the right wheel moves a certain distance. So let's call these values dl for the left distance, and we know dr for the right distance. One thing we also know that we're going to need to know is the starting angle of the robot. And so you're going to define that in whatever code you write. Uh, that's depending on where you're going to start placing the robot. That's all going to depend. So we know those values. So this is going to be theta initial. So we know that. And what are we trying to find? We need to try to find this is the center of the robot. And we know it goes to here. And we need to find that new position. So we need to find a length this way. And that value is going to be the delta x that we want it to move. And we need to find that value. That value is going to be the delta y. And of course, we want to find what that new angle is at so we can get the new heading of the robot and do the rest of the calculations from there. One of the most important numbers we need to know about the robot as we go to put the entire formula together is the distance that the center of the robot has moved. So the center of the robot moves from there to there. We need to figure out how much that distance is based off of the distance the left wheel moves and the distance the right wheel moves. We're gonna call this distance the middle moves, dm. The other information we know is that we know that the robot has a width of L. And this is one of the constants that you're going to want to take from your robot. Uh, that's going to be very important, is to know the distance between these two wheels. Other things we know that we don't necessarily know the value for, but we know the robot is moving like this. We know that the robot has a radius around the center of rotation. And that's the center of rotation there. So we'll call this the left radius, and that's going to be the distance from the center to the center of rotation to the left wheel. Then we'll get the right radius, which is the distance from there to the right wheel. And that's going to be called R, R. And finally, there's the radius to the middle of the robot, and we'll call that M, R. And I know all those lines are kind of convoluted there, but just know that the middle, the letter here, represents where it goes to, to DM, DL, or DR. The last thing we know about the robot, the robot is traveling in, is we know that the robot actually tends an angle as it moves around this arc. So we'll call this angle that it tends theta. And we don't need to actually know what theta and these radii are. We just need to be able to use them in our calculations, and hopefully they will cancel out. Spoiler alert, they do cancel out. So let's go and do some calculations based off of what we know. We know dm is equal to mr times theta. Times theta. We also know that MR can be equal to two different things. We can put MR in terms of the left radius, or we can put it in terms of the right radius. Let's start by putting in terms of the left radius. If we take the left radius, we know that MR is equal to the left radius, and we want to add to the left radius this distance right here, so these distances right here. And that distance is going to be L divided by 2. We're going to take the length between the wheels divided by 2. Finally, MR is also equal to the right radius plus, or minus, rather, the length divided by 2 because it has to subtract that value. Now we can continue here. We can put the left radius in terms of DL and DR. These are values that we actually know, so this is important. So, Distance uh, left radius is equal to dl divided by theta. And that's the theta right there. It's just so you guys are not confused. And so that's what that value is going to be. And right radius is going to be equal to the distance the right moves over here divided by theta. 
And most of these are just arc length calculations that you're going to want to know. Hopefully this is all making sense to you guys. So here's what we can do now. We can consolidate all of these equations and uh, feel free to ask me questions about how I consolidate these equations for dm in here. But dm is actually equal to, first in terms of dl, dl over theta, and that entire quantity plus l over 2. And feel free to be doing these calculations uh, while you watch as well. And we're going to want to multiply that entire thing by theta as well. Dm is also going to be equal to, same thing, dr divided by theta plus l over, or minus l over 2 rather, because that's the, that's what was up here, is the middle radius. And we're going to multiply this entire thing by theta as well. Now, now that we've got two equations for dm, I'm going to rearrange those equations to something that might be m more useful to us. So we have two equations, and one of them is theta times l over 2. That entire thing is equal to dm minus dl. And make sure you're checking my calculations here. I'm kind of breezing over some of the basic algebra, but all of this stuff should work because I've checked it multiple times. And then this one's going to be theta times L over 2 is equal to dr minus dl. So these two equations, now with these two equations here, we have theta times L over 2 and theta times L over 2. These two values do not change whether you're taking them in terms of dl or dr. So what we can do is we can set these two equations equal to each other. And what we're going to get is dm minus dl equals dr minus dm. Just a little bit of algebra gets us 2 times dm is equal to dr plus dl. And of course, That'll give us that dm is equal to dr plus dl, and that entire thing is going to be over 2. And so some of your guys' intuition might have told you that this would, would be the case, but you guys are in fact right. It's the average of dr and dl is equal to dm. So we will want to take, keep this in mind as we go on to further calculations. So this is the formula that we want to know. So the next step is to find the angle that the robot moves to its position. So if we have this angle right here, we need to find this angle. We're going to mark that off with a question mark. We need to find that angle because then from there we can take the sine of that, that angle so sine of question mark, and we can take the cosine of that question mark, and we can find the delta x and the delta y that the robot has moved in. But how are we going to go about that? So the first step is that we want to draw tangent lines from where it's going. And so uh, it might not be perfect here, but we can, since we're starting from its initial position here, we know that that's a tangent line, so that whole green line is a tangent line. And we'll draw a tangent line from here as well. So, what we know about tangent lines is since this is the radius that it's traveling at, we can draw a right angle here, because tangent lines are always perpendicular to the radius. And we can draw a right angle right there as well. The angle that we're going to want to find here is that this angle from what we know of this angle. So this angle is going to be theta. And this angle is actually going to be much easier to find because it's a part of the circle uh, and we can compare that to the left wheel distance and the right wheel distance. 
So we want to find this angle first. And so we know that the, the sum of all the angles in a quadrilateral, so this is a quadrilateral here, the sum of all those angles is going to be equal to 360. And we also know that there's a 90 degree angle in it, and there's also another 90 degree angle in it, and we know theta is there, and we know this x angle. So we do just do a little readjusting, we get that 180 minus theta is equal to this x value. So now what we need to do is figure out how to translate that. So because these are two tangent lines, uh, there's a circle proof that says that two tangent lines, when they intersect outside the circle, they are going to have an ice, they're going to be an isosceles triangle, and they're going to be equal length. So the triangle that gets made from the hypotenuse of this right triangle and these two tangent lines is going to be an isosceles triangle. And from that we know that if these two are the ones that are not equal, we know that one is also equal to this here, to the question mark. So we can construct a statement saying what the value of that is in terms of this theta angle here. We're going to want to do 180 equals 2 times question mark, so 2 times question mark, that question mark angle, and that is going to be added to so add 180 minus theta, because that x angle right here is, we're just going to automatically substitute that out. So we can rearrange it here. We can do 180 minus 180 minus theta equals 2 times question mark. And if we distribute out the negative sign here, we're going to get the two 180s to cancel out. And it's going to reverse the sign of the theta, so it's going to just be a theta equals 2 times question mark. And that means question mark equals theta divided by 2. And that will stand true always. So that angle that you're looking for, that angle inside here is going to be theta divided by 2. And there's probably going to be a lot of you guys asking out there, uh, what about if the angle does not, if the robot is not at angle 0, and we'll be able to find that. We'll just, all you need to do is, in all your calculations sooner, this right triangle here, uh, will you'll just need to add the initial angle, so that initial angle that we know, because we programmed it in, plus uh, this question mark angle. Now that we know how the this angle that the arc is tending correlates to the right triangle that we're trying to calculate, let's try to see if we can figure out what the value of this angle is based off dl and dr. So we know that from this drawing, we have the theta, that's the angle that we're tending, and we've got dl, D, dm, and dr. We've also got this radius here. And I also remind, we want to remind you, we've still got this constant of the robot, L, that we're going to be wanting to use. So uh, let's get on to doing some calculations. We can create two equations for the radius of the circle. And so those two equations are going to be dl over theta, the yeah, entire quantity, plus l over 2. And this is because uh, it's an arc length calculation where we the arc length divided by the angle gives you the radius, and that's going to be the left radius. So if, like back in the back a few slides ago when we found the left radius. And then we're going to add L over 2 to that calculation. Then we can also put the radius of the middle in terms of dr, which is going to be dr divided by theta, that entire quantity, minus L over 2. And so this one's going to be pretty easy as well. Now that we have, they're both the same radius, Let's set these two equations equal to each other. 
plus L over two, L over two, and we're gonna have the, uh, that entire thing is gonna be equal to dr over theta minus L over two. Sorry, that kind of went over a little bit. We'll put this over here, shall we? We can see our calculations. Now, let's do some algebra on this. If we subtract and add stuff to both sides, uh, we'll, we can get something that looks like this. We have L over two plus L over two. Over two. And that's gonna be equal to dr over theta. And that is going to be minus dl over theta. We'll put parentheses around it to make sure we know that we're adding this. We've got these two values here. Now obviously we can consolidate these because l over two plus l over two is going to just be l. And both the dr over theta and the dl over theta, these have common denominators. So we can combine these together to look like dr minus dl and that entire quantity over theta. Now, since we're trying to find the theta, remember, let's just rearrange the equation so it looks like theta uh, equals dr minus dl divided by l. And so this is the big equation we want here. We want the equation theta equals dr minus dl over l. And it's important that when you're doing these calculations, theta is in radians because dr minus dl over l, you are, if as long as l and dr and dl are all in the same units, you will cancel out the units and the ratio will be the angle in radians. So this is something we want. And now we know that because of the calculation we did just a few minutes ago, if you take that value, you can divide that by two to get the angle of the hypotenuse to the next position. Okay, so now as we move to put it all together, we know, let's remember what we know now. We know that the dm value is equal to dr plus dl over over two. And we know that that theta value is equal to dr minus dl over the length. So those are the two values we know. So now if we want to figure out how the right triangle works, we're obviously going to need to know this hypotenuse value here. So as we, we get to know this hypotenuse. And this is where the basic versus advanced comes into play. Uh, a basic odometry coder will, or at least not basic, but uh, a more simplified version of this is they will just use dm as the value for the hypotenuse because as you get your timestamps shorter and shorter as you're updating faster and faster, dm becomes so close to this hypotenuse value here that it becomes, you're unable to detect any difference between dm. So, but like if you're a stickler like me and I don't like to settle for approximations, you can actually find the exact value of that hypotenuse because you know this theta value here. But let's go over what uh, the basic program is. So from here, you know that we want to use right triangle trig in order to find the delta y and the delta x in this. So we'll just use these two values and know that we'll be able to plug that in. So if you're making a program, you'll probably make a variable called dm, probably make a variable called theta or angle, whatever you want to call it. So you can consolidate this into saying that delta y equals equals 
the sine of the initial angle plus theta divided by 2. And so let's go over this. Oh, and we need to remember that we need to multiply dm onto the front of this. So let's go over this. So dm is going to be our replacement for the hypotenuse. Uh, and then on the next slide, we'll talk about how to find the exact value of the hypotenuse. And we're taking the sine of this angle here. And so the angle that the robot moves to its new position is going to just be the initial angle it's at. So let's say, for instance, if you had a robot with a wheel like that and a wheel like that, its initial angle is going to be facing this way. And you're going to see that angle right there. And then wherever it moves to, it's going to be that angle that it adds on to. So it's, you're just adding the two angles together. And of course, as we went, on in the past, went over in the past two slides, the angle that this tends, uh, if you divide that by two, you can find that angle right here. And the delta y, or the delta x rather, is going to be equal to dm, the hypotenuse, fill in times the cosine of initial angle plus theta over two. And so these, these calculations will hold for any type of curve here because if you're going over, if you're not tending any angle, it will be a, your dm will cancel out because the average of the two wheels, if you're turning, I mean, if you're turning in a circle, the dr and the dl will cancel out and the dm will be zero. And so you won't move your delta x and delta y. Now, if you want to find the delta angle, so the angle the difference between the angle it ends at right here and the angle it starts at right here, you're actually going to find that difference by uh, by just adding theta that the angle tends, because the difference between these angles is just equal to this angle here. So then you're going to find that delta angle is equal to just theta. Now, of course, if you're adding this into a tracking program, you're going to want to update this over many different times. So you're going to eventually have something where you have the actual x value, the actual x coordinate is going to be equal to current x plus these values, plus delta x, and the same for y and the same for angle. And you'll just iterate these over multiple times, and you'll be able to track the position of the robot and the angle of the robot. Now, this is just for two wheels. We'll go over three wheels in a later in the next video. Uh, but let's quickly go over how to find the exact hypotenuse value rather than just settling for dm as a good approximation. The one issue you have when with that previous equation there, is that we always approximate the hypotenuse as this dm value. But how would we go about figuring out that exact value of the hypotenuse? So what we know from this is that the hypotenuse creates a triangle with the right triangle that we're trying to find the side lengths of. But we also know that it creates a triangle right here. And because the two other sides of this triangle are are both equal to the value of the radius that it's traveling around, we know that it's an isosceles triangle. So we know that these two angles that it makes are equal. And before we begin, let's just remind ourselves that if you've ever done any of like the geometry and the angles, you know that pi in radians is equal to 180 degrees. So just know that as we go through this math. So therefore, the sum of all the angles in this triangle here is just going to be equal to pi. And uh, if we do pi minus theta, we get pi minus theta is equal to both of these angles. Since the angles are both equal, we, that's pi minus theta divided by 2. 
that would mean that if we simplify this a little bit, we know that both these angles are equal to pi over 2 uh, minus theta theta. Give me a second. Minus theta over 2. So that's what we know for that. I can erase a little section here so we can do some math on that. And this is where we're going to need to know the law of sines. Because you go in here, and the law of sine says uh, that the uh, sine of an angle divided by the length of its opposite side is equal to that same thing for all sides of the triangle. So we know that sine of theta is divided by the hypotenuse is equal to sine of theta over 2 minus, oh, I'm sorry, it's equal to pi over 2 minus theta over 2. And that entire thing is going to be divided by radius because the sides opposite of these angles are is the radius. Let's move that around a little bit because we want to find the hypotenuse. Put it in terms of hypotenuse here. So the hypotenuse is going to equal r, the radius, times sine of theta divided by sine of pi, pi over 2 minus theta over 2. Now, remember that um, when you're doing calculations like these, we can sometimes use just the identities of the sine functions, the trigonomic functions. And what we know about trigonomic functions is that sine of pi over 2 minus a certain x value is going to be equal to cosine of x. Uh, because the opposite angle will always be 90 minus x. So if we invoke that, we actually know that the hypotenuse is equal to radius times sine of theta divided by cosine of what's that x value that we plug in here. That's the entire x value, so it's equal to theta over 2. Now, one more thing that we know, we don't actually know what the radius is, but because of the calculations we did before, we all, we know what this theta angle is, and we also know what this dm is. So we can just plug this into a rearranged, uh, a rearranged arc length calculation, and we know that r is equal to dm divided by theta. And we actually now know that the hypotenuse is equal to r times sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. And now that we know that, we know that you can do uh, you can do r is equal to that dm divided by theta. I didn't mean for f, to put the over 2 here in my bed. One side note here is that as your robot starts to move closer and closer to a straight line, the theta value will be zero, an angle of zero. And what's going to happen there is, since theta is in the denominator, that's going to that dm over theta value is going to be undefined. So whenever you're making a program for this, you want it's important to have a conditional to say if theta, theta is not equal to zero, then do this equation. And if not, the equation actually approaches dm and none of the other stuff matters. So we know that now, and we also know the equation for dm, and we know the equation for that theta value. So we can go ahead and uh, plug in those values that we got up here, defining arc length, that dm, the angles, and we'll, now that we know all of that, let's put, it to get, put everything together from what we did put all together here. And we can create one consolidated formula. How about we do that? 
So from what we know now, we know dm is equal to dr plus dl, that entire quantity over 2. And that theta, the angle that the robot sweeps across, is equal to dr minus dl over l. So we now know that the x value, as it updates, will be equal to, we want to iterate this over whatever code you're doing, it's equal to current x, whatever the current x position the robot is, uh, plus dm over theta. And then we're going to put in the hypotenuse value now. dm over theta times sine of theta over cosine of theta. So that's the hypotenuse value. Now that we know the hypotenuse value, let's put that entire thing in brackets as well. So we just know that that is equal to the hypotenuse, and that is going to be times, since it's x, we're going to need the adjacent side. The adjacent side is cosine. And then that is going to be equal to initial angle plus that theta value over 2. And then we can go ahead and copy the, this entire thing and make a y formula. So it's going to be current y, and it's going to be the same equation for the hypotenuse here, but instead we're going to want to take the uh, we're going to want to take the adjacent. No, not the adjacent side, the opposite side. It's going to be that same thing. Y is equal to. And the angle is going to be equal to the initial angle. I guess I should say current angle for these ones too because we don't get confused. plus theta, that's going to be it. So those are the three formulas that you want to, want to know as you're tracking the position of a tank drive. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, this is my first tutorial uh, here on this channel, so I'll probably get better at it as we continue. Make sure you stop by for part two. Uh, if part two is already out, it'll probably be the first and you're recommended. Uh, and you can learn how to get that third wheel involved. This is going to be the important part. And hopefully, and maybe there's a few people watching who are actually looking to figure out how to track their tank drive uh, if they're using a tank drive for their certain robot. But thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, I will see you guys later.